Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. A whole lot of legislation coming out of Trenton this week. We will talk to Middlesex State Senator Linda Greenstein, who is in the middle of it all, to explain what we're in for in 2020. Also this week, the State of the State Address. State House reporter Phil Andrews was there. His report coming up. New Jersey now has a restaurant with a sensory room for children with autism. We'll tell you where it is. And CNN names a woman from New Jersey as one of the heroes of 2019. And now our interview with Mercer and Middlesex County State Senator Linda Greenstein. I am proud to introduce our guest today who is one of the most prolific senators in Trenton, Linda Greenstein from the 14th Legislative District, which is Mercer and Middlesex counties, and she is a Democrat. Thank you so much. Thanks I appreciate you being me. here. We're taping this right after the State of the State. What's a general impression you had? My general impression is that it was a very optimistic speech by the governor, um, looking ahead, looking back, just generally very optimistic. Uh, he mentioned a couple of problems, for example, the uh, issue that women has, some women have brought up, uh, not feeling that comfortable at various gatherings that are held, the League of Municipalities and other gatherings that are held. Women have apparently been approached inappropriately by people over the years, <laughs> and um, they're saying that they blame the organizations, whatever. So anyway, there's going to be a committee that's going to take a look at it. The governor mentioned that he wants everybody to feel comfortable. The committee's going to look at how women are treated and, and received at uh, state functions? Yeah, what happens is there are a couple of big state functions that have been held every year for many, many years. There's a train ride to Washington, League of Municipalities, and um, a number of women reported recently and also in the past that um, these would have been, let's say, young legislative aides and others who were present reported that lobbyists or legislators who were more in more powerful, you might say, approached them and uh, um, basically gave them a hard time. And they want these organizations to take steps to make their events safer. Oh, okay, that's and, what I was yeah. going to ask. What was the next step? How are yeah. you going to, uh, how, there, are, there are already rules but in the book and there's already laws in the book. There are some rules, but the governor did talk about wanting to make sure that we're doing everything possible. As you may know, there was also a committee that was held, a state committee, a select committee, that looked at various allegations of rape taking place um, between various people that I'm mentioning. Right, right, right. And, I remember the... Yeah, yeah and so we, all of this grows from that, and there's going to be a new committee that's going to be taking a look at this as well. Senator Weinberg, who's been in the forefront of this, is going to be sponsoring that committee. So the governor mentioned all of that and said that he wants to make sure that everyone is comfortable you know, in state government. It's interesting that you took that out as the, as the one thing it to stuck, highlight. It stuck in my mind because most of the things he was talking about were relatively positive. That was one of the areas that you might say could have been negative, but he was trying to say that we're going to take a close look at it and uh, try to work on those Well, issues. the state of the state is supposed to be positive, right? I mean, it's the governor Usually talking about how, how he's doing more than anything else and mm -hmm. what he wants and the agenda going forward. Yes. The... the the issue that got the most coverage was the millionaire's tax mm -hmm. because he has tried and failed to pass it and now he says he's going to go after it again. Mm -hmm. Are you for it? Um, it's something that I have voted on several times in the past, as have most Democrats. It does divide along party lines. And most Democrats at one time or another have voted for it when the bill has been up. Uh, the last year or two, both the um, Assembly Speaker and the Senate President have not wanted to put it up for us to vote on. So the governor pushed for it. It has not been put up for a vote. Uh, that may change in the future. Um, and if it does, it's something I would very likely support. But uh, right now, it just hasn't been put up. But the governor brings it up because it's, for him, a very important part of his agenda. Will it help? My personal opinion is we have so many financial needs in this state, whether it's water infrastructure, the transportation system. I think the amount of money, while always helpful, will be a drop in the bucket. 
I think it won't hurt, but I'm not sure how much it will help. When you say it won't hurt, I have talked to uh, Senate President Sweeney, and his, his concern is that people of wealth, a lot of wealth, will leave the state. If you tax them exorbitantly, as he says, you're going to force people to Florida or to Delaware or mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Or you York. know, I used to not think that was true, but actually I have spoken to some people who would know, some people who deal with people of wealth, and they've assured me that there actually may be a lot of truth to that, that people um, who are wealthy still do not want their money to be taken. They get very upset about it, and some of them leave. I don't know how large those numbers are, but certainly some people do leave as a result of these actions. And knowing that, you would still vote yes? I'd have to have more information, but potentially yes. I'd have to just know more at that time. Normally, I don't bring out the research, but I was struck by the fact that we did research and we just put your name in to see what you were involved in. And that's why I introduced you at the top as being mm -hmm. prolific. It is amazing the number of bills that came up that your name is involved in. You're working, <laughs> congratulations. We, I really, really am. I've been looking very closely at what's out there, whether it's new bills that I wanna put in or other people's bills that I wanna sign on to as a second prime sponsor. And there have been a lot of great bills in the last session. Let's start with uh, a bill to establish a task force on drinking water infrastructure. I know, was this because of the Newark water crisis? Did you want to well, do it because of that? We've done many different things when it comes to water. Now, the task force on drinking water infrastructure was actually a, completed its work about two years ago. But we're still dealing with the fact that many of the suggested pieces of legislation that came out of that task force have not been passed yet. And we were hoping that this term, a lot will be passed. In fact, I put, we are allowed to pre-file 25 bills for the new session. And all the bills I pre -filed, almost all the bills I pre-filed were water bills, because I have so many. Um, they're all about, um, many of them are about fixing the piping system that's under the ground. Either reline or replace? Replace. Um, we really need them to be replaced, but that would cost billions of dollars. We only have so much. We're looking into potential bonding to do that. But these pipes are in very bad shape. We don't realize them because we don't see them. Um, and, and for children, uh, high levels of lead in the water. Well, this is isn't even problems. this isn't even the lead part. This is the fact that the pipes themselves, the entire infrastructure underground, is in such bad shape that we really need to replace a lot of it. It's unbelievable, but. When we had these hearings, we found out that there weren't even maps of the underground so that people would know exactly what was under there. Many companies, towns didn't have that information. So one of the things we talked about is the need to map it out, to know what's under there, and to know the condition. And that's where we stand right now. We just don't know, and we're trying to make That it is a huge problem, because when you talk about infrastructure with bridges and roads, you can see them, you know That's what right. has to be fixed. When you talk about infrastructure with pipes, you're not, you're, you're kind of flying blind. And it's easy to forget that that's there and that it could cause big problems. Obviously, when pipes burst, it's a tremendous inconvenience and expense. Um, there are all sorts of issues that are involved with those pipes. Well, There's leaking, and lead, of course, uh, has come up in many different ways. We first started the Drinking Water Task Force because of what was going on in Flint, Michigan. And then we immediately came to find out that it was going on right here in our state, uh, not just Newark, but many other places, both large and small, not yeah. just big cities. It's, it's a huge problem. It's a problem everywhere. And it's some a of these problem. old schools, too. Schools are a major part of it. And we have, again, loads of bills on this subject to make sure that people are informed. If their kids are in school, if there's a lead problem, we want to be sure that they're informed they of what's happening. They have to get happening. passed and signed. Is one of the problems the cost? Cost is, I think, one of the major issues. Uh, just as an example, the pipes that go from the main water line to your house that just go per perhaps across the street, um, those lines have lead in many cases, not in all cases, and they really need to be replaced. Now, some utilities are doing some replacement. I believe some of it's going on in Newark right now and in other places, but it is a major issue. Um, 
I know down in Hamilton in our district, there are a lot of meetings about it. One of the issues there in Hamilton is one issue leads right into another. We have something down there called Trenton Waterworks. It is run by the city of Trenton. Many of the towns in our area get their water through Trenton Waterworks. One is Hamilton, and several of my other towns do as well. I do want to talk about the plastic bag legislation and some Thank of you. your other hundred bills. When we continue our conversation with Senator Linda Greenstein, 14th Legislative District, Mercer and Middlesex Counties. We're coming right back. <laughs> 